Hey everybody, Greg here, and this is a short video about using the Apple Numbers program, which is a spreadsheet. It runs on the desktop, laptop, iPad, iPhone. And in this demo, I'm going to be showing you the iPhone use of the Numbers program because there's a real cool feature available only in the iPhone and the iPad, not available in their desktop version, that allows you to create essentially a form entry system. So let's get right to it. On the home page, you see the default icons on my demo phone that I use here. It's an Apple iPhone 5S. And then on the second page are some of the uh, programs that I downloaded that are part of that Apple Essentials collection of Apple-developed um, applications. So there's numbers, and it's, it's free now. It used to be a paid program of 10 bucks or something, but still, the whole suite was about $30 to get all of them. And uh, it's nice that it's available for free now. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and click on Continue. And it's asking if I want to use iCloud for numbers. I think I'll say, yeah, let's go ahead and use that. I don't want my spreadsheet stored just on the phone. I want them in the cloud so I can get to them from my iPad or my laptop or desktop computer. Um, and I should correct something. I'm pretty sure this is free. It may be coming up as free because... I don't know, under this ID, maybe it was purchased before, although I don't think so. So anyway, your results may vary. So on this screen, um, it's asking about, uh, well, really just describing collaboration, Freeform Canvas, some different features, and we can go ahead and start using numbers, create a new one. So I'm going to say, uh, let's use numbers, because I want to show you how you would normally get started with a spreadsheet if you weren't at that first time, you know, screen. And so basically, right now I would be looking at documents if I had any, or I could create one by pressing the plus sign at the top of the screen. I'll choose a template. Let's use blank. And for this spreadsheet, um, they're, they're announcing here they have new action menu. That's great. We'll say got it. Uh, that's, that's down here where you can tap that. And it's supposed to be a context intelligent suggestion menu, which is kind of neat. Uh, but for now, we're going to move that out of the way. So in this spreadsheet for the demo, what I want to do is create a quick and easy spreadsheet to track um, weightlifting, okay, strength training. And um, so we're going to have the date. And let me just get started here, you know, from, from left to right. Keep in mind, you usually want to have going down your rows in a spreadsheet, you want those to be like records in a database or like index cards with information on them. So... Let's say on a certain day you had a certain workout. So for each workout you do, you'd have a three by five index card, right? So that's the idea. In a spreadsheet, the rows are those individual entries, the names and addresses or whatever it might be. So um, at the top here, I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to say, let's have the date be that first row. Date and time, I'll say. Um, I'll just put date time. All right. And in the next one, I'm going to put what exercise is it? And then in the next cell over, I'll be tracking how much weight it was. And then in the next cell over, we'll put in um, the reps, how many times we lifted that weight. And in the next column over, I'm going to say sets. So you know, I'll, let's say, lift a certain weight 20 times, and then I'll take a break, and then start again. So that starts the next set. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer, actually, to my own spreadsheet just to make sure I'm creating this properly. <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, activity, weight, rep sets. Oh, and total. So we can calculate the total in our spreadsheet by uh, of that particular workout. I'm just going to say, okay, this cell is going to be equal to, um, you know, whatever the reps were times however many sets there were. So if I lift it 30 times and I do that twice, so that's, you know, 60 times the, the sets and then um, times the weight that was lifted. And we'll go back and find that there. And you'll see that's going to give us an error symbol initially. 
um, but that's the formula that we want copied down. Now actually uh, up here we want to have total so I'm going to take that formula that you saw me create and I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that. I'm just going to say total and I'm going to use that formula again. So here's just for review. Um, whoops. For review here, we're going to say the total is equal to the sets times the reps. Yep. And then times the weight. And then I'll press the check mark there. So that's a simple formula, but very handy. And then we can get a grand total of a complete workout at the bottom. You know, if we go through our workout, we want to see what's the cumulative total of weight that we lifted, we can do that. So anyway, uh, let's see, what are we else? Oh, and location is nice to have because the reason for that is if you work out at a few different gyms, you um, will have slightly different weight machines. So even, you know, one a leg press at one location won't be the same as a leg press at another. And if you're using your spreadsheet as a reminder of, okay, what was I at last time on this machine? And you're at these different gyms, you want to know, oh yeah, it's, it's the leg press at this particular gym where, you know, you lift slightly more, slightly less, depending on the machine. And then this last column, I'm just going to dedicate to notes. Okay, so there's the basic, you know, structure of this spreadsheet those columns that we just talked about, and uh, the first one being date, and etc. So here's where this gets kind of cool, and that is the ability to create essentially a, a data entry system, which is a lot faster and easier than you know just typing everything in on a tiny phone, right? Um, so let me first go to our location field. And we can take that location field and turn that into a drop-down menu. So to do that, I'm going to say, okay, for this column, I tapped on the G to highlight that column. I'm going to say, let's format that um, to B. And I'm going to see what my options are here. And cell format, ah, format, pop-up menu. So again, it was select the column, we go to format, choose format, and then choose pop-up menu. And with pop-up menu, now we can have a variety of options here. So location, add a location. I'm going to say one option is just the home gym, you know, lifting at home. Um, the next option is going to be downtown. There's always a gym downtown. So there we go, downtown gym, and finally west side. Just as some examples. <clears throat> okay. And there we go. So the locations above. And you can have an initial value selected. I'm just going to leave that alone. So let's go back here. So now the column header still says location. But when we tap on that cell to enter something in, we don't have to type in downtown. We can just tap downtown. There it is. Um, and, and for anything else like that, if there are some particular, um, and here I call that column ac exercise, I'm going to call it activities. There we go. Um, so if there's some particular exercise activities that you do all the time, a couple of dozen, well then you can go ahead and select that column, go up to the paintbrush, which is the format menu, choose format from the heading across there, and go down to pop-up menu again and start adding some items in here. So leg press um, and then you know tricep uh, pull. So maybe you're pulling down this way. Um, that's making a correction there. Triceps, plural, that's fine. Um, let's see, leg extensions. Okay, so it takes, you know, it takes a little while to get your thing set up for your different locations, your different exercises. One thing you can do is go ahead and keep those alphabetized. You can kind of grab these items and adjust their position in the list. And when you're all done, press the format here to go back a level. And then you can tap on that triangle 
the downward pointing triangle, that'll just kind of make that format menu disappear, and then tap anywhere to just get back to looking at your spreadsheet. So um, now what we want to do is, instead of working with a spreadsheet on such a small screen and having to scroll left and right, we can tap on the plus symbol, and we can choose new form. So we're going to have a new form, and it's going to be based on the spreadsheet that we just created. So I'm going to tap on where it says table one, and now it creates this, um, this entry system. I can tap and hold on that tab there and bring it to the left, and I can double tap on it, and I'll just rename it to entry. So I get my entry, and then I'm going to tap over here on the spreadsheet, and I'll double tap and rename it. Here we go. Um, to you know, strength training. Or just strength, there we go. Tap again back on the entry form. So that's how we get back and forth between the entry form and the spreadsheet. And mostly you'll be in the entry form. You probably won't even you know, bring up the spreadsheet to do much work on that until you're on your desktop computer. You won't see the form entry on your desktop computer. You'll only see the spreadsheet. But as soon as you go back to your iOS device, you will see that entry form there on your iPhone or uh, iPad. So here, when I tap on Activities, now we get this menu that pops up, and it has all of our exercises there. So this becomes a very quick way of tracking your workout, because once you've created the spreadsheet, now it's just a matter of going to the next machine. Okay, I'm doing leg extensions, and it's going to be 40 pounds. Um, I'm going to do that, uh, you know, 30 times. And let's say this is my first set, so we put that in. It's calculating the total of 1,200 pounds. Um, it's saying downtown because I entered that before, but let's say uh, I'm doing that, uh, you know, on the west side or whatever. We can just, you know, you pick whatever you want, and then it uh, applies that. Now, one thing you'll notice is when you are done here, you go ahead and tap done, you can go ahead and click, oh, I didn't put the date in also. Let me get the date at the top there. I don't have to put in the whole date because today. I can just put in the time. So let's just say uh, it's 9.41. All right. And... Uh, I'll say done. So now we go to the next record, and as I go to enter in the title, uh, actually here, let me do the weight, we can define those cells so that the right keyboard comes up. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. For date and time, I'm going to say we want to format that as date and time, and um, to get a little more detail on that, I can tap the I, and I can specify, yeah, let me do year, month, day. I want to do just um, a 24-hour time format, so 108 is, uh, is 108 a.m. And so that takes care of that first column. And then let's go to our weight column, and let's format that weight column to be a number. And I can tap the I. I can say number, but I can tap the I and choose... Uh, maybe one decimal place if I want to have perhaps, you know, a half a pound in there. Um, so that's that's good. And then the next column over, which was reps, same thing, we'll format that as a number. And there we don't really need any decimal uh, place, really. And then sets again, formatting it as a number. And zero decimals. If we put automatic, you might accidentally enter in a fraction there. It might you know, show up wrong, so it's better just to do it that way. The total, of course, is going to be a number because it's a formula, um, but we could you know, format that and choose, uh, again, zero as the decimal value. And then we had location, that's fine, and notes is just a text field. So when we go back to our entry system, again, entering the time, 941 now, and we go ahead now, and the weight, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to show you, is that uh, we'll pick an activity like extension, the weight. Now it's coming up with a number entry keyboard because we went in, we formatted that column, and said, yeah, this is a number field. It's, it's a number column. And so now it knows, oh, okay, 
give you the number keypad. So now I don't have to shift and go up to the numbers row and kind of type that in super quick, just, you know, 40 pounds and again, 30. So now you see how it's starting to pick up speed here. Now, one little glitch is if you're on a field in any spreadsheet, in any data entry system, when you press enter or when you press tab, you should go to the next field. So this is one little glitch in Apple's numbers program, which I'm going to bring to their attention um, by way of one of these little videos. And basically you'll see, so I enter in 40, I press return, I enter in 30, I press return, everything's working great. It does its calculations. I should drop down to the location field, right? Once I put in the number of sets, it calculates the total, but it's not doing that. It's, it's jumping the um, drop-down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and put downtown there and then notes. Uh, but other than that, that's basically it. Now, the video has gone 15 minutes. I went kind of quick. You can you know, pause and rewind, but you can see how this would be very handy. And again, just to review, it's you know create the big spreadsheet, figure out your columns, which are those descriptors of you know, what's in that column, and then down the side are going to be all your dates and times, essentially. That's that's usually a good, uh, you know, coding system because you're never going to have the same date, time, and minutes, seconds, whatever, you know, again. So that defines a unique record in your database, essentially, in your spreadsheet. Um, but, but with whatever you're doing, tracking your odometer mileage for tax purposes with the car, uh, you know, whatever kind of information you're tracking, it really makes it handy to have the essentials right there on one screen where you can go in and just quickly enter stuff, avoid the typos, have those big entry keypads for the numbers. Uh, I, I think you'll have fun playing around with this and starting to think of some spreadsheets. In fact, um, as we're closing up, since, since this has been sort of the numbers introduction, I'm going to go into my phone and just read off some of the spreadsheets I use, and I've, I've used the same system to create these. So uh, there's one for the car, and it has, you know, date, um, the starting odometer, the starting location, and then the stop date, stop odometer, stop location, and it calculates the distance. And then at the end of the year, I, get, I take that information, I can give that to my tax person, and, um, and then that becomes, you know, a tax deductible expense for all my business miles. I have a spreadsheet I call body composition. You know, there are these composition scales. You can measure your weight, your body fat, your amount of bone mass, water, etc. And so yeah, I do that once a day. I just enter it into the spreadsheet and I have, um, it, it's motivating because you can see progress on these different areas, uh, percent body fat and, and muscle. Uh, it gives you a physical rating, the scale that I have. It'll calculate your um, calories burned and that changes right so as you get more muscle mass you're going to burn more calories in a day and that's kind of rewarding because you can see hey my weights workout uh, is putting on muscle mass which is regardless of what I do going to cause me to burn more calories every day even on a day that I don't work out right so which hopefully is not going to happen I <laughs> hopefully I don't skip my workouts but uh, so that's a spreadsheet body composition um, and then I, I keep a health spreadsheet and that I I put in just the summary, like the weight and body fat, let's say, into that spreadsheet. And also how much sleep I get at night or, uh, you know, some things that are interesting to measure, like your body core temperature. Uh, ideally, you want that to be kind of high. You don't want your body temperature to be cool. Um, and there are things you can do to keep your body temperature high. Uh, blood pressure, you can measure, you know, your glucose, whatever you want to do. You drop it in this spreadsheet. Then you get some actual measurable data that you can work with if you're trying to improve your health and you can see okay here are the outcomes I want here's the data I have this is what I'm doing here's how it's impacting the outcomes you know and it gives you a more effective way of, of having a better health program and uh, like the car spreadsheet I also have a bicycle log so it has the date of the bike ride and what was the start odometer what was the start location what was the stop date and time what was the stop odometer stop location what was the distance so I can calculate how much how many miles did I ride this month very easily just look at the spreadsheet um, I break it down into personal and business so if it is a business related uh, trip whether it's by bicycle or by car you know I track that um, and then with the bicycle spreadsheet I keep track of whether it was a difficult ride uh, it, it, or how much energy, how much effort did I put into that ride. So, um, you know, did I ride really hard or easy? 
and then the the route intensity. So I may have been riding pretty easy, but it was a pretty difficult ride in itself just because of a lot of hills or whatever. Um, and then I track the weather and the route description because I might take two different routes getting to a location. Part of that helps me just estimate my time of arrival. If I'm going somewhere to do some consulting work, I'll know ahead of time, oh, okay, that usually takes about 40 minutes to get there or whatever. Um, and uh, whether or not there's a lot of hills and, you know, equipment that I might have taken for that particular ride. So um, anyway, so that's the, uh, the bike one. And let's see what else. Equipment inventory, just there. I, I have a separate spreadsheet for computers because computers are sort of unique when I keep a spreadsheet of all the different computers I'm working on, whether they're mine or they're for a customer. I keep track of the serial number, what operating system it has, you know, some other details about setup, what tasks were performed during setup. Um, and so that's, that's a spreadsheet dedicated to computers. But outside of that, what about computer displays? What about printers? What about TVs? What about all kinds of electronics? You know, that's another sort of category that doesn't have an operating system. You're not going to have updates or special software installed, but you want to keep track of serial number, make and model, value, that type of thing. So it's good to have an equipment inventory and a separate, I think, a separate computer inventory. Um, now, I also have a spreadsheet for video production. That is the biggest spreadsheet I have. And the reason is because there are a lot of tasks required to produce a video, um, depending on what kind of video it is. So I'll have notes relating to what program was used to originally generate the video. You know, was it iMovie, Final Cut Pro, uh, ScreenFlow recording like I'm using now, you know, I'll keep track of that. I'll keep track of where it was posted just in case I need to go out and do an update. I might have a version on YouTube, a version on Vimeo. Um, and then, you know, what text was used to post that video. So if I want to post it somewhere else and I need the embed code and the description and the title and all that, copy paste. It's very easy. I've got it for future reference. Or if for some reason it gets deleted by accident or whatever. So anyway, there's just a lot of columns relating to, uh, you know, what playlists they're added to, what keywords were used with the video. There's a lot of data related to a, a video when you're really doing a a lot of videos and producing them and you want to make sure everyone's gotten through the full workflow right so there's one that you're halfway done on there's another one you got to push ahead in the queue and you know so uh, anyway that's that's video production and uh, coupons also that's just one I don't really spend a lot of time on but uh, sometimes you get like a, a gift reward cards worth a hundred dollars or whatever and you want to keep those with you and you want to use them when you're at the store. Otherwise, a year goes by and you've forgotten about it. So I try to keep track of what coupons I have and, and uh, what their value is. Time tracking, I'll sometimes track different activities for work or, or just to see how much time I'm putting into my workout versus, you know, whatever else. So um, and uh, I've got a bunch of others, too. But those those are the main ones. And uh That'll just give you some ideas of the kinds of things. Oh, one other I should point out is boxes and storage. So everybody's got stuff, right? And you can see behind me, I've, I've got some boxes on the shelf back there. So everybody has stuff, but if you number those boxes, have a column that's box number five, have another column with what's in that box. And I don't, I don't mean like the full description. You could do that. But if you list particular items, right? And so it's what's the date, you know, that you're creating this, the date, the box number, what's the item, then eventually over time you'll end up with, you know, 30 boxes, let's say, and a lot of stuff in a lot of different boxes, but now you need to find that, you know, special cable or cord or whatever, and you're wondering where is it in all those 30 boxes? Well, go to your spreadsheet, do a quick search, and you'll see, oh, okay, that VCR cable or whatever, DVD cable or, you know, HDMI cable, um, or extra DVD drive or whatever it might be, you know, is in box number 28. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of a good one to have. And another one is measurements. You could probably keep that in a text file, but I keep uh, a spreadsheet of measurements so I know what my the different rooms, how, how they measure out. If I'm going to be buying some piece of you know furniture or whatever, I, I want to be able to have those measurements handy. Measurements of the windows at home, uh, measurements of of desks, and particularly if I'm working on a woodworking project, um, I want to have measurements that I'm going to type in there for different pieces of wood that I want, and it's just handy to have it in a spreadsheet. So, 
Anyway, I won't go on and on, but that's uh, that's an example for you of some of the spreadsheets I use. And, and now that you've seen a little bit about how to create your own numbers uh, spreadsheet and use that form entry, I hope that you'll uh, take advantage of that. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas for future videos. I always appreciate those. And uh, have a great day.